Welcome back to the channel guys, it is James from Fish Steaks and we are back in Flight Sim. Before we kick things off I just want to say a big thank you for all of the support on the Flight Sim content, it's massively appreciated. But let's get into today's video. Today we're doing the ILS landing and approach tutorial. This has been heavily requested so we've put it to the front of the queue and we're doing it today so let's get into it. First things first, I just want to say this is going to be a beginner's guide. If you have never landed your plane before, this video is for you or if you're struggling to land it you keep messing up the landing right at the end or whatever this video is for you stick around at the end of this video i'm going to detail exactly how you can perfect this process so if you follow along and do everything i do today you're going to get your plane on the ground i guarantee it you're going to do your first successful landing i guarantee it but if you want to learn how to then perfect that process i'm going to give you the exact rundown of things that you can do and practice in order to perfect land in one of these planes without further ado let's jump into it so i'm currently on the ground at manchester prepared for takeoff um if you'd like to know how to prepare the plane for takeoff link is in the description for that video but we're here for the landing today so before we do anything before we get into the air there's a couple of things you need to understand about your flight plan so in the a320 you can use these arrow keys to sort through your flight plan look at all your different nav points so what we want to focus on here is our descent now you can see cruise altitude is 37,000 feet we know that and we're at cruise altitude here at Aptug 37,000 feet the next waypoint here Divam we're at 10,000 feet right so the descent has started at this point okay by HK945 we're down to 6,400 feet this here is our runway runway four right runway zero four right that's our runway that's where we'll be touching down now in the ILS systems the plane will bring itself down for the most part okay but to do that it has to capture what's called the glide slope now it'll capture the glide slope around Dipmo at Dipmo we need to be at, at least 3300 feet so I'm actually going to aim for 3,000 feet because it's it's always better to be a little lower than it is to be too high on a landing. If you're too high, you'll overshoot it. This is a beginner's guide. I'm going to make sure you guys get down safely. So we're going to aim for 3,000 feet, okay? By going up, we also need to be at 3,300 feet. So our focus here is to be at 3,000 feet by going up. That's what we're going to focus on. But the first thing we need to focus on is Divam. So Divam, we need to be at around about 10,000 feet that's where things will really get started that's where our descent is going to begin so i'm going to get myself in the air i'm going to get flying and i will see you guys when i arrive at the aptog nav point my apologies i did forget to point out please turn atc off while you're following this guide this guide is designed without using atc trust me you don't want to be using atc for your first ever landing if you do want to use atc in the future Please stick around at the end of the video and I'll describe how you can do that. Let's get back to the video. Okay, you join me back mid-flight and we are just hitting our Aptug waypoint here, as you can see. Now, Divam is a fair distance out. It's currently 141 nautical miles out and we know we're currently at our cruising altitude-ish, 37,000 feet, we're at 35,000 feet. Um, we need to be at 10,000 feet by the time we hit Divam. I'm going to give it 100 nautical miles and then I'll start my descent. Okay guys, we are 105 nautical miles away from Divam. So I'm going to start preparing for our descent to 10,000 feet. Now this is something that you, you can monitor yourself as you go. If you feel like you're going to hit the 10,000 too soon, then... Um, you can always slow down the descent, but if you feel like you're not going to make it, you can always speed up the descent. You just watch that yourself, pay attention to it. You know you've still got 100 nautical miles before we reach the nav point, so we're fine. You're going to hit X here to engage the select altitude mode. We've been over that in the last video. If you didn't see it, link in the description. Okay, so we're about 30 miles out from Divam now. We're at 11,000 feet, so we'll be easily at 10,000 feet by the time we hit Divam couple of things to be aware of is when you do hit 10,000 feet you need to turn the landing lights on 
So we will make it to 10,000 feet with plenty of time. Like I said, it's always better to be too low than it is to be too high on landing, so that's fine for a beginner. Just hitting 10,000 feet now, so landing lights come on. And now we'll cruise until we hit Divam, and then we'll begin our descent to 3,000 feet. Okay guys, we are 10-ish nautical miles out from Divam, and I'm going to start preparing the plane now for our descent to 3,000 feet. We know we need to be at around 6,000 feet by HK945, but I'm just going to go ahead and begin the descent to 3,000 now, so that we're there in plenty of time, because we do need to be at 3,000 for going up. So we'll come up to our altimeter first, and we'll select 3,000 feet on the altimeter to begin our descent. And I'm also now going to slow the plane down to 160 knots, so we'll engage selected speed mode. Begin slowing the plane down. At this point we need to be careful about our flap settings. So we'll be watching our speed here. When we hit about 190, we're going to bring our flaps down by 1. 180 flaps to 2, 160 flaps to 3. So we are about to hit 190. I'm going to bring the flaps down to 1. And if we look up here, we can see we are about to hit 180 flaps to 2. And then we will begin to slow down a little now. But once we hit 160, flaps to 3. So we're about 20 miles out from HK now, where we need to be at 6,000. We're currently at 7,000, so we should be fine. We should make that. And we're just above our 160. Okay, we are now past our 6,000 feet. Continuing our descent to 3,000 feet. And we're about the 160, so I am going to drop the flaps to 3, which will also slow the plane a little bit more. Our speed brakes at this point should be on, but they already are. So that's fine, but just check that yourself. If it's not armed, arm your speed brake at this point. And we'll continue now to HK945, where we'll pick it back up and discuss what happens next. Okay, we have now arrived at the HK waypoint near enough, and I am in touch with our air traffic control, just getting our altimeter reading. If it is different to your current reading on the barometer, you can change that now. Mine isn't. Still 2992, so we're good there. And you can see also we've just been given our clearance for landing. Um, so, what we do now is we can turn on our LS system with the LS button just below the barometer here. So we're going to hit that and that turns on our ILS systems. So what you'll notice now is you have these white dots along the bottom and up the side of this screen just here, as you can see. And what we're looking for is some magenta diamonds. One will appear here on the left and one will appear up here on the right. And we're going to wait for them to move down towards the central yellow line. When they do, when this bottom one hits the central yellow line, we're going to hit our localizer button, which is just up here. This is the localizer. We'll hit that. And when this side one comes down and meets the yellow line, we'll hit our approach button. And what that will do is line the plane up with the runway and start to bring the plane down towards the runway at the correct uh, rate of decline in order to land the plane safely. So all that's left now is for us to wait for these magenta diamonds to appear. So at this point, you can take a deep breath, relax, enjoy the views and wait for your magenta diamonds and I will see you in a second when our diamonds appear. Okay, you can see our magenta diamonds have just popped up on the screen and you will notice this bottom one is already on its way towards the center. So what we're going to do is we're going to lower the speed 
straight away we're going to come down now to 139 this is going to be our landing speed so this is the final um, change we'll make in terms of speed bring that down to 139 and with that we're also going to drop our final set of flaps so we're now in full flaps we're going to just make sure that that speed brake is armed which it is Our landing lights are already on, but I'm just going to double check that. And everything is perfect. So we're going to contact air traffic control, make sure we are clear to land on the runway 04 right, which we are. Everything is perfect. Okay, we're at the right speed. We are at the right altitude. We've got our magenta diamonds and they're on the move. All we're waiting for now is for this bottom magenta diamond to reach the middle yellow line and then we will be hitting our localizer okay so bottom magenta diamond is just about to touch that yellow line what we're waiting for is we're waiting for it to break into the yellow line it doesn't have to be perfectly central because the plane will line itself up once it intercepts the localizer signal and um, but we want it to at least break into the yellow line before we hit the localizer we can see it's just so close right now. Any second now, we're going to hit that localizer. And what the localizer is, is essentially a signal from the runway to the plane that says, hey, line yourself up here, and you'll be perfectly in line with me to come in for a landing. So it looks like the yellow line has broken into the magenta diamond there. So we go up, we hit our localizer, as you've just seen, and now the plane will begin to line that diamond up perfectly in the center of that yellow line. When it does that, laterally at least, you are perfectly lined up with the runway. We still need to decline the plane, obviously, to land on the runway. But that's going to be the next step. The next thing we need to do is take the second magenta diamond from the top right. And once that starts to drop and hit the middle yellow line, we'll hit our approach mode. So we are just now waiting for that second magenta diamond to appear. Okay, our magenta diamond has made an appearance and it's actually already on its way down. This one's moving quite fast. So we can go ahead and get ready to hit our approach mode button, which is right here. You can see just under the altimeter. And I like this angle because you can see the screen on the right there. So we can still follow the magenta diamond. And then obviously we can hit the approach mode button at the appropriate time. So again, we're waiting for the magenta diamond to cross the yellow line and then we hit approach mode and what this is this is the glide slope so once we hit approach mode here the plane will capture the glide slope and that will begin to then descend the plane at the correct angle in order to reach the runway for a safe landing so our magenta diamond is over the yellow line we're going to hit approach mode there we go and if we actually come over to the screen, we can see the GNS there in a box. That means we've captured the glide slope and we're on our way down towards the runway, guys. So the only thing left to do now is get our landing gear down and prepare ourselves for a landing. Landing gear goes down. We're going to do a flap check. That's right. Speed brake is armed and we're going to put our auto brake onto medium. Now, this entirely depends on the length of the runway. At Helsinki, we have a fairly decent sized runway, so medium should be fine. Obviously, if you're at an airport with a very short runway, you're going to want to go maximum. If you've got a very, very long runway, then you can go low. That's fine too. Okay, so as we approach our landing, there's a couple of things I want to run over and explain so you guys know exactly what's about to happen and what to do. So there's a few controls that you need to be aware of. First of all, pressing Y on your controller will disengage the autopilot. Normally we disengage the autopilot at around 1000 feet out, but we're gonna wait a little longer this time for the purposes of this video, because you are a beginner, and the longer we leave the autopilot on, the longer the plane will do our job for us, which is obviously makes our job a little bit easier. But just remember it's Y to disengage the autopilot, because I will not be leaning over to press it manually because I want to focus on the runway. So we will be pressing Y to disengage that. We press A and B together to idle the throttle. We'd normally do that at around 30 feet off the runway, but today we're going to do it a little bit sooner. I'll tell you when to do it. The reason we're doing this a little bit sooner is it will slow the aircraft down a little quicker, which will allow us a softer, more easier landing. 
the last thing to be aware of is flaring the aircraft. So when you flare the aircraft, you essentially just pull the front of the aircraft up and this allows the back landing gear to touch the ground first. Then you allow the, the plane to fall naturally so the front landing gear touches the floor. So all we're going to do when I say that I'm flaring the aircraft is we pull the left stick back very slightly and then release it and let the aircraft fall naturally back to the floor. We're going to do this at about 20 feet off the ground and it's a very very slight pull backwards and release. We're not looking for a huge incline or anything like that. Just a slight pull backwards and release. So we've just passed about uh, 1,000 feet out, which is normally where we disengage the autopilot. But as I said, we're going to go a little bit sooner. I'm going to actually bring up um, my Xbox face buttons on the right hand side of the screen so you can see exactly what I'm pressing when I'm pressing it because that's going to be easier than me trying to tell you on the fly what to do. But I will try my best to explain. So, we're getting close now. Five hundred feet out. We're just waiting for these callouts. Bring the buttons up on screen now. Remember why to disengage autopilot. about 300 feet I'm gonna disengage and now that we've disengaged we're in control of the aircraft all we're looking to do is keep it steady keep it lined up it'll keep descending on its own just make sure you're lined up with the center the wind will try and push you slightly to the right so you're just gonna fight that by pushing slightly slightly to the left make sure you're lined up in the middle and as we cross over the threshold of the runway we will be idling the throttle in a second Idle throttle. 60, 50, 40, 30, 20. Flare the aircraft. And hold B to activate your reverse thrusters now. This will slow the aircraft right down. And we have touched down. So, we're going to idle the throttle again, and then I'm going to use X, just not natural brakes, push on A to give myself a little bit of juice, so we can begin to, t begin to taxi the aircraft off the runway. We can just use X now, just to uh, slow the aircraft down as we taxi our way out, and what we're waiting for now is for ATC to give us our um, taxiway, so we know which gate to go to. There's our taxi ribbon, we've got our taxiway, and we can approach the hold short at the runway exit. If you've got your uh, taxi ribbons turned off or ATC turned off, just approach your nearest exit, stop at your hold short, and then contact ATC to find out where your gate is. But that's it guys, that's the hard part over with. Welcome to Helsinki and you've successfully landed your first plane in ILS. Congratulations. So we're gonna cruise around here now. We're just using X to slow the plane down and we're gonna stop as usual at this hold short where I will pop on the parking brake and go through a couple of setups before we taxi our plane to the gate. So we'll stop there. And the first thing I'm gonna do is idle the throttle And then we're going to take our landing lights off because we don't need them anymore. We have landed. Again, congratulations on that. T turn your taxi light to taxi. Prepare ourselves for taxi into the gate. And I'm also going to start up the APU auxiliary power. We're going to hit the uh, master switch and we're going to hit the APU start. 
The reason for this is we may need our APU in an interim between turning off the engines and connecting to the ground power. We may not need it, but it's, it's definitely better to start that up, have that on hand just in case we do. And now we are ready to taxi ourselves over to the gate. Uh, if you are using your ATC manually, now is when you would call in ATC and request your taxiway to a gate. We've already got ours, we can see our taxi ribbon. So we're going to go ahead and taxi ourselves over to gate 29. Okay, we'll stick our parking brake on. I'm going to come up here and we will just activate the APU bleed, get our APU active. This will allow us to shut off our engines. So we come down to our engine master switches, turn both of them to off, back up to the overhead display and deactivate all of the fuel pumps. There we go. And once that's done, we can activate the external power. Now we're running on external power, we can deactivate our APU. And we're fully connected to the ground. We'll reset our flaps. We actually probably should have done that sooner. One flap to taxi to the, uh, the gate. So flaps reset. And we can at this point go ahead and request any ground services you might want from your ATC. Depending on your level of SIM, just select ground services. And we got all these different selections. You can do them all or you can do whatever you like. For example, um, let's see. Request jetway connection. We'll do that. And the jetway start coming out to connect to the plane for our passengers to depart the aircraft. While that's connecting, I did realize the batteries are still on, so I'm gonna turn both of those off really quick. Just come up to the top here, hit both batteries, turn them to off. So we are fully on our ground power now, which means when we're ready to power down the aircraft, we can just disconnect. And whenever you're ready and you're satisfied with your journey today, go ahead and disconnect your ground power to kill the aircraft and that is it guys that is your successful first successful ILS landing touchdown in Helsinki congratulations let me know in the comments if you made it to Helsinki or wherever it was you were flying to I'd love to know please leave us a like if this video has helped you out and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more content like this we really do appreciate all of the support. But before I do go, I did promise I'd go over a couple of tips on how to perfect ILS landing in the A320. First off, manual takeover. In today's video, our manual takeover happened at about 300 feet from the runway. The ideal place to do this is at 1000 feet. So when I say manual takeover, I mean when we deactivated the autopilot. So next time you try and land, try and do it at about maybe 500 feet. And the time after that, drop back maybe 700 feet until eventually you're doing it at 1000 feet out and you're comfortable doing it at around 1000 feet then you've got it nailed on and it's perfect second thing idle in the throttle today we idled the throttle i think at about 90 feet from the runway somewhere around there ideally you want to do this at about 30 feet because the higher up you are when you idle the throttle the more chance the aircraft could stall before you reach the ground so again next time you're going for a landing try it a little bit lower and then a little bit lower again, you might want to try 60 and then eventually get yourself to 30. Once you're doing it comfortably at 30, it's perfect. Always flare at 20, we did that today anyway, but just don't forget, always flare the aircraft at 20. Try and idle the throttle at 30. And the final thing to do, if you've got both of them down, is attempt to do your descent with ATC on. ATC, in my opinion, is not great in this game. The rate of descent that they expect you to do it can be quite difficult, they don't give you a lot of time to get from nav point to nav point and descend to the levels that they want, which is why we had it turned off today and you followed my guide rather than the ATC. Personally, I don't play with the ATC on at all, but if you want to go that extra step, you can turn the ATC on and try and do what they're telling you to do as well. But main things are manual takeover at 1000 feet, idle your throttle at 30 feet, flare at 20. And that's it guys, thank you very very much for watching, we'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.